All right, guys, uh, we've got another fitting session here for you today. Um, there's been a lot of feedback on the channel that people like watching this stuff, which I was amazed at. I thought the vast majority of people would be bored out of their minds watching me work. Um, but we've got another one today. This is Georgie. Georgie is another member of the ARA Skip Capital team, newly named with a new sponsor. Mm -hmm. And some fancy new bikes. They've upgraded the factors this year uh, to the new models. Georgie's the road captain on the team, mm -hmm. fresh back from Warrnambool, where she let out Sophie Edwards for the win which was an awesome race bit of a bit of a negative race that one but it was an awesome race to watch I was, I was really stoked to watch that one and great to see the team doing well again um, so we're gonna have a look at Georgie today do you have any major problems on the bike George? Um, I'm okay pretty comfy um, the main thing we're doing I guess is changing my pedals so in the new team I need to be on Shimano yes Sponsor so, specific, you have to be... We have to all have the same so we can change bikes. And then um, one thing when I'm riding, I do sort of lose my neck or where my yeah. shoulders is earrings. Hunched I don't up. know if that's something we can work on. We'll go through all this and document it with Georgie and hopefully we find some weird stuff. <laughs> so it's interesting because I've ridden behind you and with you in a few bunches and I've, I'm a bit nervous here because you look pretty good already on the bike. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to find, but we'll see how we go and hopefully it makes good viewing. He's still a bit out of shape. Yeah, there's a little tilt. That probably won't come out on the, on the shot, but you can see the right side is just ever so slightly lower than the left. So a little bit of a pelvic tilt downwards to the right. Your left glute is a little bit bigger than your right as well. And your left calf has got a very slightly different shape and contour, but there's not a big size difference, which is good. Cool. All right, let's have a look at your feet. They are a bit different. Yeah, the left arch has got a higher contour than the right, so this might be slightly interesting. Yeah. All right, tense your quads up and lock your knees back straight, Georgie. Yeah, your whole left quad is bigger than your right quad. Cool. What? Not not by a massive margin. It's very subtle. You'd have to look closely, but this correlates with the glute also being a bit bigger on one side. So there's a little bit of asymmetry, which is good. <laughs> How long has your seat been bent though? Is it, you only put that thing on recently, didn't you? Yeah, it's like this January. Yeah, no, it's much more likely that you've got like a like a three millimeter shorter right leg, for example. Oh yeah, that, that you shorter. that you don't know about, and you've been compensating around it so well for years. Just using your muscle groups slightly differently, which has then just led to slight asymmetry in the size of the muscles. To be clear, the degree of symmetry that you have skeletally and muscularly is far above the average person. So what I mean is most people are worse than this. Yeah, so, so, so don't stress. Now, stay there, lock your knees back straight, and then with both hands, stretch up towards the ceiling as high as you can. And the, the tilt is still there, so it's probably a slightly shorter right leg, maybe. All right, relax back down again. Now, how good are you? Touch my Go for it. Oh, showing off. <laughs> Slightly, slightly better than me, Craig, just slightly. Arch back into extension. Yeah, excellent, fabulous extension. Bend to the side, show me a lateral flexion. Yeah, really good. And then go to the right, it'll be a little better this way. Yep, sweet. All right, let's have a look at your gait, Georgie. We'll get Craig around here. What I'm gonna do is just get you to stroll. Yeah, no, no weird catwalk walks. Just, just do, do whatever comes naturally. Yeah. They're not that bad. <laughs> but you can see uh, your, come, come a bit quicker, just walk as normal as you can. You can see the dropped right shoulder and the little bit of a list. You can actually see it easy, most easily by following the, the line of the jersey down. Everything is just tilted very slightly to the right. This is a fabulous hip. <laughs> Look at the internal rotation. Cam, you would be, you'd be jealous of this one. Uh, so it's got like 60 degrees of internal rotation. Most sort of blokes, you would get like 20 degrees out of them. Yeah, girls are a bit better on average, 45. You're way above average. Oh, right. This is really helpful. It means that when you're tucked over in an aero tuck, your knee can rise really high before it runs into the edge of the socket. Mm. So this is like the opposite of hip impingement. Yeah, <laughs> so you have the opposite of hip impingement. So you look awesome. We're not gonna find much here. Let's have a look at you on the bike. You don't walk heavily on your toes, but you ride crazily toe down. 
And there's only two possibilities. One is that you're just one of those rare people who rides like that, and that's, that's fine, and that's correct, and that's how you are. The second possibility is that it's, it's, you're just compensating so well for, the, for one of two things, either the seat being a bit high or the cleat position being a bit too far forward, so well that you're not even aware that you're doing it and you've never had a problem from it. As one of those two things. So have you, one of the things we might experiment with is seeing what happens if we run the cleats further back to, de to stabilize your foot more over the pedal. So as the cleat goes back, your foot becomes much more inherently stable over the pedal, right? So the calf won't have to contract to stabilize the foot. The foot will be more inherently stable. So the foot will flatten off, right? If we, if we move the cleat further back on the shoe and you start flattening your technique off and ankling with more freedom and less rigidity, you might get more hamstring engagement, which is typically what happens when the calf is tonically active all the time on the, on the pedal like that. It's, it's, a, it's supposed to kind of switch on and then come off again in terms of like evolutionary drives. Like when you're walking, it switches on, it goes off, switches on. When it's on all the time, it tends to inhibit, in my experience, the activity of the, of the hamstring a lot. So you don't get really good hamstring engagement across the bottom of the stroke. So you become really quad heavy. Yeah. And when you're quad heavy, it drags down on the front of your pelvis because that's where they originate from which tips weight onto the front end. Yeah. And one of the giveaways of that is that when you're going really hard, you creep forward on the seat and your yeah. quads burn, but you never get hamstring or glute burn, yeah? So spreading the fatigue over a larger area of muscle group, if we can, is probably good practice for like cardiovascular efficiency, right? All right, let's have a look at you. Whoa, toenails. <laughs> I just know that these are going to be on oh, yeah. camera. Oh, we'll these zoom in. Makers. We'll get these close up shots. Oh, now, look at the size difference in your feet. Now, that could explain a lot. This might completely explain the asymmetry. In fact, it's about four or five millimetres. The whole right <laughs> foot is longer than the left. One big flipper. That is curious. That is really, really strange in the context of you not having a massive leg length discrepancy. So. Often if you've got a significantly shorter left leg, you will have a shorter foot attached to the leg. Mm. You've, you've got no significant discrepancy, but a really large foot size discrepancy. <laughs> well, this isn't gonna be a big change though. So the cleat is not really, really far forward. We're only gonna get it back about another four, maybe another eight millimeters. It'd be interesting to see what this does to your technique as we pull it back. If you immediately start sort of slackening off your ankling a bit. Mm. Okay, so the seat setback changes your ankling more than anything. That's interesting. Well, I just came forward like three millimetres. Your foot isn't as rigid. Interesting. The problem now is the drop. Yeah, front end is way too high. Okay, <laughs> it, needs, it needs everything we can get. So switch into the drops for me. Don't go crazy low, come back up again. No, that's just you being normal, isn't it? That's, that's just how low you can ride, isn't it? I normally ride this low. Yeah, yep. No, I thought you were exaggerating it, but that's actually how good you I are. So, my my so yeah, so I, I thought you were like, you're like holding yourself really low, but that's just how you are. That's you're just unbelievably mobile in the hips. So you can rotate your pelvis forward a ridiculous amount like that that's insanely forwardly rotated so you, you're just like so far within your limits of the drop it's not even funny so like I can't I'd, I'd say that ideally probably 40 millimeters more drop would be kind of comfortable you'd find that you just relax your shoulders down and you'd be like oh my neck doesn't hurt anymore Is yeah there a cost to my breathing when I get more aero? Sometimes, yes, sometimes, but not in your case, I, I doubt it. Just from looking at you, I reckon what you'll find is that you'll save so much in tricep and yeah. trap activity from bracing yeah. off the front end, it'll just feel lighter. It'll just feel like there's less going on in your upper body, yeah. But it needs to be, a, if we're gonna do it, it needs to be a really big change. Uh, another thing to think about, the next bike, size it down. And, yeah. and talk about maybe a 140 stem on it if you really have to. You don't want to go any smaller than that because the stem, once it gets out beyond 140, makes the handling really weird. Yeah, they start to get a bit strange. The major 
symmetry change I think we're going to get out of here is staggering the cleats. The more I've been watching you, the more I'm thinking that what's actually happening is you're ankling asymmetrically, probably because you've got two different size feet. So imagine you've got two different size feet, right? But the cleats are in the same position on the shoe. Yeah. Technically what's happening there is the cleats are actually in different positions relative to your foot, right? So your nervous system has to deal with two different length levers, which are the two feet, right? And the lever arms are different left versus right. So there is a good, a good rationale behind the logic in staggering the cleats to match the foot size discrepancy and just see what happens. So in your case, the left foot is shorter than the right. The cleats are backed all the way back. We can't move your left one any further back. So just move the right one forward. The key thing is that they're different to each other. Let's see what it does. Spin it up, just put a little bit of mild load on, go up a couple of cogs, that'll do. Just cruise along. Yeah, your glute engagement is more symmetrical. The right hip drop is completely gone. So that's a good start. And look how more equidistant your knees are from the top tube. Yeah. So you, you, because you're not dropping your right hip forward, your knees track more, more equidistantly. And the left calf, you, you might be able to sense that your left foot is not as rigid on the pedal. And you might not. It's very subtle. My right foot feels better. Yeah. So somewhere it feels better. Yeah. But depending. My right ankle, sorry. Yeah. From my perspective, that is the only thing you need to do with your symmetry because it goes from exceptional to ridiculous when we do that. Like that's no one is this symmetrical. Yeah. That'll stop your left Achilles getting tight. Over time, you'll probably notice that your quadricep bulk evens up a little bit more. Um, and your, if you're getting sort of a, a vaguely tight left glute or something, that'll kind of go away. Just those little things, everything will just kind of even up a little bit in time. It doesn't take much. Yeah, a three millimeter movement forward on the right cleat. And that's just because you've got two wonky feet, Georgie. <laughs> Everyone is wonky in some way. We just had to find yours. Right, Georgie, we finished up. Uh, the bike is mostly unchanged because your position was brilliant to start with. Um, we've made two changes, or, or rather one major change uh, and, and, a, and a recommendation, which is for the front end of the bike. But the main change here, you had a very, very slight symmetry issue. You would drop your right hip forward on the bike, the tiniest bit. The right knee would pull across towards the top tube a little bit. And because of that, you would tow the pedal a little more aggressively with your left foot as the left hip got moved up and back away from the center line of the, of the, of the bike. So it, it, it was creating a functional leg length difference. The causation behind this was very straightforward. Your right foot is bigger than your left <laughs> for, for reasons that we're not sure about, <clears throat> but the right foot is bigger than the left by about five millimeters. So we've staggered your right, sh your right cleat forward on the shoe by three millimeters, which is a tiny maneuver and it completely resolved the problem. You mm. look brilliant. So you'll feel quite different with this for about five minutes and then it'll feel natural. And um, over time, your body will sort of even out the little bits of asymmetry that have come from this, but it should be, it should be completely fine. We've run the cleats a little further back on the shoes, which has also allowed us to drop the seat a tiny bit. Um, your very rigid toe down pedaling technique stayed exactly the same, no matter what we did. So we've left that, that is just how you are. Not good, not bad, just how you are. And the big recommendation for this bike is we would love to get the bars lower. So we're gonna try and investigate into a 16 or 17 degree pitch stem to replace the integrated cockpit and see if we can drop the bars down 20 millimeters or so, because that's definitely the causation behind your shoulder discomfort. You're too functional for the bike. So you roll <laughs> forward really well and you try and drop your torso between your shoulders, which is a sign that you're trying to get lower. So we'll make those changes and um, hopefully that resolves all of the problems. We'll see how we go. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Your fancy shoes. Ooh. Love the pink. Ooh.